Hello, teacher. Hello, students. Welcome to today's lesson on methods of entering international trade. In our previous lesson, we discussed about foreign terms of payments with a reference to consignment sales. Consignment sales is an arrangement where the buyer receives the goods but makes payment to the seller only if and as the goods are sold by the buyer. However, ownership of any unsold goods remains with the shipper. Students, in today's lesson, we will learn about methods of entering international trade. There are certain methods to enter into international trade. These include licensing, exporting, joint venture, totally owned facilities, strategic alliances, trading companies, counter trade, and multinational firms. Now let's start our lesson by discussing about licensing, which is one way of entering the international trade. Licensing is especially advantageous for small manufacturers wanting to launch a well-known domestic brand internationally. Licensing is a contractual agreement in which one firm permits another to produce and market its product and to use its brand name in return for a royalty or other compensation. The second way of entering into a foreign trade is exporting. A firm may manufacture its products in its home country and export them for sale in foreign markets. Exporting is the process of selling of goods and services produced in one country to other countries. There are two types of exporting, direct and indirect. Direct exports are goods and services that are sold to an independent party outside of the exporter's home country. Direct exporting is straightforward. Essentially, the organization makes a commitment to market overseas on its own behalf. This gives it greater control over its brand and operations overseas. It affords better control over distribution, potentially greater sales than with indirect exporting. Sales representatives and importing distributors are examples of direct exports. Indirect exports are the process of exporting through domestically based export intermediaries. The exporter has no control over its products in the foreign market. The following are examples of indirect exports. Export trading companies, export management companies, export merchants, conforming houses, and non-conforming purchasing agents. Students, let's proceed to the third way of entering international trade, that is joint ventures. A joint venture is a partnership formed to achieve a specific goal for a specific period of time. A joint venture with an established firm in a foreign country provides immediate market knowledge and access, reduced risk, and control over product attributes. There are five common objectives in a joint venture. Market entry, risk or reward sharing, technology sharing, joint product development, and conforming to government regulations. Now I want you to do the following exercise by discussing with the student sitting next to you. Describe the difference between direct and indirect export and list examples for each.
Students, I think you have described the difference and listed examples for both direct and indirect exports. Good. Let's now provide you the answer so that you can compare it with your responses. Direct exports are goods and services that are sold to an independent party outside of the exporter's home country. Direct exports afford better control over distribution, potentially greater sales than with indirect exporting, has greater control over its brand and operations overseas. Examples of direct export include sales representatives and import distributors. Indirect exports are the process of exporting through domestically based export intermediaries. The exporter has no control over its products in the foreign market. Examples of indirect export include export trading companies, export management companies, export merchants, confirming houses, and non-confirming purchasing agents. Now it's time to discuss totally owned facilities, which is another way of entering international trade. Totally owned facilities means when a firm has its own production and marketing facilities in one or more foreign nations. It exists at a deeper level of involvement in international business. Students, let's continue discussing strategic alliances and its distinguishing characteristics. Strategic alliances, which are the newest form of international business structure, are partnerships formed to create competitive advantage on a worldwide basis. Strategic alliances will become key tools for companies if they want to remain competitive in this globalized environment, particularly in industries that have dominant leaders, such as cell phone manufacturers, where smaller companies need to ally in order to remain competitive. For example, the automobile and computer industries are working together in strategic alliances. The modern form of strategic alliances is becoming increasingly popular and has three distinguishing characteristics. One, they frequently occur between firms in industrialized nations. Two, the focus is often on creating new products and or technologies rather than distributing existing ones. Three, they are often only created for short-term durations. Now I want you to do the following exercise by discussing with the student sitting next to you.
Students, have you discussed the reasons for companies to form strategic alliance? The reasons for companies to form strategic alliance include the following. Technology exchange, global competition, industry convergence, economies of scale and reduction of risk, and alliance as an alternative to merger. Now let's see trading companies as a method of entering foreign trade. Trading companies provide link between buyers and sellers in different countries. Trading company buys in one country at the lowest prices consistent with quality and sells to buyers in another country. Students, the other way to enter international trade is counter trade. Counter trade is essentially an international barter transaction in which goods and services are exchanged for different goods and services. Counter trade occurs when countries lack sufficient hard currency or when other types of market trade are impossible. For example, in 2000, India and Iraq agreed on oil for wheat and rice barter trade. Students, the last but not the least way to enter international trade is through multinational firms. A multinational enterprise is a firm that operates on a worldwide scale without ties to any specific nation or region. The multinational firm represents the highest level of involvement in international business. For example, most of the soft drinks and petroleum companies found in Ethiopia are multinational companies. Let me wind up today's discussion by summarizing the main points. Today, we have learned about the methods of entering international trade. Methods of entering international trade include licensing, exporting, joint venture, totally owned facilities, strategic alliances, trading companies, counter trade, and multinational firm. This brings us to the end of our lesson today. In our next lesson, we will start a new chapter, chapter 4, which is about business records keeping and financial reports. Until then, goodbye teacher, goodbye students. Music